So about 14,000 years ago, the last major ice age came to an end. As the ice age ended and the ice sheets retreated, they left behind a mark on the North American continent that would later become known as the Great Lakes. There are five Great Lakes in total, Huron, Ontario, Michigan, Erie, and Superior. Behind me sits Lake Erie. It's the fourth largest of the Great Lakes and it's also the shallowest, averaging about 62 feet all the way across, with the deepest point being at 210 feet. The inlet for Lake Erie is the Detroit River to the west, and the outflow is the Niagara River to the east. Lake Erie is home to a diverse set of wildlife, including a lot of different types of fish and mussels. And if some people are correct, it's also home to a monster. Join me in this episode of Ohio Legends and Tales, Cryptids Edition, as we talk about the story of Lake Erie Bessie. of Lake Erie Bessie go back to at least 1793, where the captain of a sloop named the Felicity supposedly saw a creature that was more than a rod in length playing around and splashing in the water near his boat as he was out fishing. Now following this in 1817, there was another ship that would reportedly sight a 30 to 40 foot long serpent splashing around in the water. A lot of these stories seem to have this similarity with a creature splashing around looking like it's playing or frolicking. Now even though it hadn't been aggressive, Later on in 1817, another crew on another ship would spot another creature saying that it was about 60 feet long and they would fire shots at it, but they didn't think that they'd actually hit it. Later on that same year, a third sighting would happen, but this time the creature was spotted on the beach. It was just the body of the creature. Two brothers with the last name of Dussault would reportedly find a creature laying along the beach and when they got close enough to it to realize it was dead, they decided to take off and go get some help before coming back. By the time they got back to the creature though, it was long, the body was gone. Nobody knew where it had went. It may have washed out, but nobody was really sure, but they did report that it left behind some small silver scales. Now what happened to the scales after is a mystery. I'm not really sure what happened to them. I couldn't even substantiate the story 100%. So if the scales ever existed, I don't know where they've gotten to. Yet another sighting of the creature was actually reported in the Illyria Independent in 1856, but it wasn't from 1856. They reported that in 1929, Joseph Swift, a local, had spotted a creature in the brush near an area where he was farming. Now he reported this was a 25 to 30 foot snake-like creature that was in the brush near the Vermilion River, which flowed right into Lake Erie. Now apparently he didn't get close enough to really see the size of it because he was frightened and he would wind up running away. When he came back later, he would see the indent from where the creature had been laying in the brush. And based off of the, the height of the brush, he was able to figure out kind of how, high, how tall the creature was when it, it lifted its head up. Now, fast forward to July of 1892, and the crew of a ship that was heading from Buffalo, New York to Toledo, Ohio, would encounter a, another snake-like creature writhing around in the water, but this time it looked like it was actually fighting with something. Now, the crew on the ship would claim that the snake-like creature was about 50 feet long. And as the ship was approaching, it would actually spread itself out and lay flat on the water. And they said it was about four feet around from, from what they could estimate as they approached it. But before they got too close, the creature would vanish into the water below. Now in 1896, a group of onlookers from a shoreline at Crystal Beach, which is in Ontario, Canada, would report witnessing a creature writhing around playing in the water. It looked like it was having a good time splashing around just off the shoreline. 
Now witnesses report that the creature is about 30 feet long and has a dog-like head and a long pointy tail, and it left just before nightfall. Now those are the most well-known reports of the Lake Erie monster, but reports would supposedly continue even through the 20th century. So with all of those sightings in mind, it had to be something that people were seeing. So what were they seeing? So as far as animals that it could be on Lake Erie, the biggest fish, the biggest thing in Lake Erie is the Lake Erie sturgeon, which is comes in about 300 pounds and it can be 10 plus feet long. Now some of you may have caught on by this point, the name Bessie sounds an awful lot like Nessie. If you're familiar at all with the Loch Ness Monster, its nickname is Nessie. And that's where Bessie got its name actually. People saw the resemblance between what was being reported as sighted here and the monster of Loch Ness in Scotland. And they wanted to name it something similar to tie the two together. So the name became Bessie and that stuck. Now another similarity that Bessie has with Nessie is that some people in the cryptid world at least have thought that maybe it could be a plesiosaur, which is what a lot of people think the Loch Ness monster is. Now as far as we know, plesiosaurs went extinct with the dinosaurs about 66 million years ago. Aside from that, Lake Erie itself was only formed about 14,000 years ago and is a freshwater lake. So the chances that a plesiosaur would have been able to not only survive the great extinction, but then somehow make its way here to Lake Erie over the last 14,000 years are very, very slim. Now that being said, a lot of people speculate as well that maybe it could have been a large snake that had escaped from maybe captivity that somebody had it in, had it in the area and it escaped and, and wound up surviving for a little while, maybe a python or something like that. But even then, with some of the reports, are much bigger than any snakes that are known to exist in the world today. Now the most likely explanation is that it is some kind of a fish or a snake that's out on Lake Erie that has been misidentified and maybe the, the size has been exaggerated. People, you know, when your adrenaline gets rushing and you think you see something or you see something and you kind of just get a quick glimpse at it. So that's another possibility I think is the most likely scenario with this just because we're pretty familiar with everything that's in Lake Erie. It's not like Scott, it's not like the Loch Ness in Scotland where the water is too dark or too difficult to, to kind of look into with, with sonar and that kind of stuff. The research that's been done on Lake Erie has been done pretty thoroughly and we're pretty aware of all of the animals that actually exist and live within the lake. So that being said, there's still some fun that can be had with this, even if Lake Erie Bessie is only just a legend. In 2001, there was actually a report of multiple people being bitten by something in Port Dover, Ontario, Canada. Now, there were a lot of people that were reporting when they were swimming at the Pump House Beach that something was coming up and biting them on the leg and then, and then running away. Nobody was killed. Several people were treated at the hospital and the bite wounds themselves were a lot larger than most people would have expected. Now there was speculation early on that maybe a baby Nessie was, was swimming around up there and, and swimming up to people and taking a bite and then running away, coming into the shallower water looking for food or something like that. And the truth is they never actually 100% identified what was actually doing this, but they had a pretty solid theory. So Dr. Harold Henst, and I'm gonna butcher that name, I just know it. He was the doctor that saw a lot of the patients that had been bitten by something. Now the wounds were about six inches from the top to the bottom tooth. And they're right along the inside of the leg. They all occurred in shallow water. Dr. Hintz said that's a big honking fish when they asked him what could be causing these bites. He said he wasn't 100% certain, but that the most likely culprit was probably the bowfin. Now bowfin are primitive and they're very, very aggressive and they're known to protect their nest for up to nine weeks after spawning. So while some people were speculating that it was Lake Erie Bessie that was causing these bites, the real culprit was most likely a normal everyday fish. Now whether Bessie is a 66 million year old plesiosaur or just an average everyday fish, one thing is for certain. It's definitely caused a lot of hype and a lot of conversation over the years. And it even has a beer and a hockey team named after it. So the Lake Erie Brewing Company has a seasonal IPA called the Lake Erie Monster that it puts out every year in celebration of Lake Erie Bessie. There's also a hockey team that's actually affiliated with the Columbus Blue Jackets called the Cleveland Monsters. So people are definitely having fun with it up here. It's, it's kind of a fun thing to speculate and talk about. And it's an interesting topic and it's one of those things where you've heard of the Loch Ness Monster, 
Most people don't realize that Ohio has its very own version of the Loch Ness Monster right here on the northern shores. Before we end the video, I want to briefly mention merch and the Patreon. So if you want to get some Bear Heart Nation merch, I've also got some new Cryptid merch that's coming out. And if you head over to the merch page, it's linked down in the description, you can pick that up over there. And then I've got the Patreon. Patrons help out a lot when it comes to making this kind of content, as well as the other videos that I make on other channels. If you want to get your name in the video, early access to content, behind the scenes type of content, go over and check out the Patreon. There's a lot of awesome perks over there. There's new things that I'm adding all the time. With all that being said, I want to thank you all for watching. Thanks for joining me in this episode of Ohio Legends and Tales, and I will see you all in the next one. Alright, opening for the Betsy video take one. Hopefully, the sound's not terrible. Lake Huron, Ontario, Michigan, Erie, and Superior. Huron, Ontario. Alright. I had to remember. <laughs> Lakes Huron, Ontario, Ontario. Lakes Huron, Ontario, Superior. Lake Erie is home to a diverse set of wildlife, including a lot of different fish and mussels. And if some people were to. What fly fucking bite? Yet another sighting of the creature was actually reported in the Orion. Elyra, Elyra, Elyria. Well, now those are the most well-known stories of the Lake Erie monster. sightings so with all of those sightings in mind it makes sense that people must have been seeing something right so what was it that they were seeing I feel like the camera's crooked it's not I'm crooked <laughs>